Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We're talking about business. We're talking about health. What do we talk about on this show? It's the three-legged stool of business, right? We have the harmonious architecture. That is how you grow and scale your business. But we can't forget the other two legs of the important stool, which is mind and body. And I always say as a leader, you have to have your mind and body in peak shape. It's a stool. If one of the legs aren't in order, it's going to fall over. You can't grow a business if you're not healthy. And today we're going to focus a lot on health. I'm excited for this conversation. I'm excited to dive in. We're talking about we're going to get in the kitchen and make our meals better and fuel our bodies so that we can grow our businesses and our minds. Awesome conversation lined up for you and an awesome guest. And I already hinted at what the harmonious architecture is. You know, it's the context for all of the content and noise you hear in the world. So let's dive in. I want to bring on my amazing guest, Christy. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to dive in. So real quick, give us the overview of what you're doing now, and then we'll talk about how you got into this mess. <laughs> yes. Um, so I am a certified health and wellness coach. Specifically, I work in the kitchen. Um, I am a kitchen confidence coach. And what I get to do is I get to work with women and support them as they move from a diet cycle lifestyle to a whole food nutrition um, balance. We include mindset, which I absolutely love that you said, um, mindset, nutrition, movement, all of that. And what I have found is that when you are confident in the kitchen and the food that you are putting in your body, that translates into so many other areas of your life. And you can be confident like the the sky's the limit. So um, I start in the kitchen and then we just we grow from there. Amen. That is exactly right. If you're not fueling yourself properly, it's like it's like a car, right? If you put the wrong fuel in, you're not going to go anywhere. And that's why I, I know this episode has a place on this show. We talk about health a lot. I'm excited to dive in. Now, I, I said we're going to talk about how you got in this mess. Not that it's a mess, but we all have a backstory, right? And I'm always curious what, how did you get here? Like, what was that motivating factor for you to say, no, I need to teach people how to manage their health and, and what they put in their bodies? Yeah. So I, I love that. I really think that everybody has that aha moment when they're ready to make that switch and it's a permanent switch, right? It's no longer just like a back and forth or a yo-yo. Um, so mine was actually 20 years ago. It was when I was 30 and I was using food for comfort and to fill a lot of different spaces in my life that I just didn't know what to do with. And I was about 65 pounds overweight. I was a single mom and I just knew that I had to do something different. I wasn't happy with who I was. I wanted to be a better role model for my daughter. And I knew though, the catalyst for me was that it had to start with food because that was my, <laughs> you know, that was, that was the thing that, um, you know, would take me downhill. So I gradually started to learn more about food, how the food, you know, different food I ate reacted to my body. Um, and at the time I was working in the child care industry. I was a child care director for 15 years. So I worked with other women. I worked with, um, you know, families. And a lot of the times they were coming to me asking me for advice. What should I feed my, my children? Because we were spending more time with them than they were. And then at the end of the day, I had moms who were saying, I don't like, I just don't know what to, to make. I need to cook healthy meals for my family, but we're coming home, you know, seven o'clock at night. So I really found that as like, this, this is where I can make a difference. And so I, I knew that I wanted to um, get into that coaching space and be able to bring those changes um, to families. And so I ended up leaving um, a, a just over three years now, I left my uh, my career of um, early childhood and moved into my coaching space. That's amazing. Now, let me ask you, because I, ha I have little kids. I know the energy <laughs> required to keep up with them. Uh, not at that scale. That's totally different. But yeah, let me, let me just ask you right there. When you switched to eating clean and healthy and you, you changed your lifestyle up, what was the, the immediate payoff for you? in mm. trying to wrangle these zoo animals every day. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I think the immediate payoff for me was I remember like I remember more now than I did so at the time. Right. But I remember not being able to really get up and down on the floor with my daughter and play with her. And once I got down, then like that was it. Right. So we were sitting on the floor and like, okay, what games can we play on the floor now? Because I didn't have the energy. So for me, it was. Um, a lot of it was energy because also too, as a single mom trying to work a full-time job, you know, feed myself healthy and also feed my daughter healthy. There was a lot that I realized that like went into it as far as planning and prepping. Um, and that's really where I started to dive into the planning aspect of it because being an emotional eater and letting my emotions drive what I was eating, I felt like I needed to be in control of my food. And so meal planning and meal prepping gave me that control factor that I needed because I was like, okay, everything's like right here. I know what's coming next. So that's, that's kind of how that worked. And I still now 20 years later, I still meal plan and meal prep every single week because it's just been part of my routine now. Yeah, I, I think that's the secret too, right? Like when you when you're guided by your emotions or by your calendar and you're like, yeah. I need a quick bite, a McDonald's or whatever, like whatever it is for you, it's that quick thing. It's probably not nourishing you, it's not healthy, it's actually taking away from your energy. I, I love the fact that you have a plan that you can stick to. So then talk to me, what does that look like? How do you help people plan out their meals, start introducing a healthier lifestyle and making this manageable and not having to spend hours upon hours in the kitchen. Yeah. So first of all, we're all busy, right? Whether we're working a full-time job, whether we're commuting, working from home, whatever that looks like, we don't have hours to spend in the kitchen. I don't even do that. And that's my job, right? So um, what I like to do is I like to take a look at the overall calendar for your week, because nine times out of 10, you know pretty much what is coming. Life throws like some, you know, obstacles in during the week, but we we do kind of know what that calendar looks like. And so that's what that plan is. The plan is saying, hey, you know what? Tonight, I can make a slow cooker dinner and have it, like I can throw it in the crock pot in the morning before I leave, have it cook all day. And when I come home, because we've got the kids games and practices and Christmas concerts and everything else that's happening right now, um, everybody can help themselves to dinner on their own time rather than ordering pizza, ordering Chinese, bringing it in, taking it out, right? So we know that we're having like a nourishing um, meal for our family at that time. It's really important for us to be able to take no more than 10 minutes at the beginning of the week. And I choose to do Saturday or Sunday, but no more than 10 minutes and do a quick glance of your week coming up. Because again, you want to feel like you are in control. You want to know what's coming. So if you have nights that are late, you're commuting from the city or you, you have late meetings. Those are not the nights that you are trying the brand new recipe that you brought off of Pinterest. Like you're just not going to have time, but those are the nights that you can make a quick, um, chili or a quick soup, you know, in the crock pot or instant pot. I encourage my, the women that I work with to find one appliance that utilizes their schedule really well. So for some that's an instant pot, some that's a slow cooker, some that's an air fryer, but those are the appliances. Like you don't need all of them. <laughs> you don't. Um, and that's where the overwhelm comes in. So what I do is I just really simplify, I simplify your schedule based on, you know, what you have for the week. And that, that then brings it into the kitchen for you too, because you don't need one more thing to think about. We can make it simple and we can bring it all together. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. And um, I actually, I think I found the secret hack to this. So I, okay. I work from home. It looks like you do too. Mm -hmm. um, so my window, which is right behind my computer here, is above my back porch. Currently, as we speak, I am smoking a chicken. If I crack this window open a little bit, I am just in <laughs> barbecue heaven all day long. I don't know. Maybe you could teach that. You can have it. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, my that's husband strategy. Just... My husband smokes as well. Like he smokes meat as well. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that's one thing. So I, I get that. But it truly is like, 
um, maybe not smoking the meat per se, because that's kind of a process, but there are so many different appliances out there. And once you find that one that really, again, fits in with the lifestyle of your family, I also like to do that too, is really take a look at what does your family need? What do you need? Because your needs are different than my needs and what I'm doing might not work for you. So when we can take that and you can, um, you know, really explain that, then that's really where we get to break it down and, um, you know, piece apart what, what you need in the kitchen versus what you don't need in the kitchen. Yeah. And I think that kind of hits on the other side of it too, which is what you're eating. So mm. uh, the, the huge, diet craze that that goes on it's i'm on this diet i'm on that diet i know you said you don't do that but when you're when people start working with you how do you help them understand there a there's no one diet it's what <laughs> works for you and your lifestyle and and then b adopting that is more important than finding a diet that works so walk me through that process yeah and this is the time of year right when we're all looking to be like okay january is coming so now i'm gonna do this like for the next <laughs> whatever Three days. Um, so what yeah <laughs> Like that's, that's it. Um, so what I like to do is explore with um, my clients how the food makes them feel. Um, because a lot of times we are in such a rush that we're not focusing on, hmm, you know what? Like I woke up feeling bloated this morning or like I just, I this really didn't like sit with me real well. So um, I like to have them keep a journal. I do not do anything. We do not, um, like use my fitness pal. We, I just have them write it down either in the notes section on their phone, or they have a separate um, notebook for me. All they're doing is writing down what they ate, the time they ate and how they feel afterwards, because that's an important part that we tend to not pay attention to. And that part of how you feel after you eat tells a whole story on you know, so much. And so what I do is I have the, um, I have them track for at least seven days. And then we go back and we look at it together and we make modifications if we have to. And one of the things that we can do with that too, then is, okay, did you have a vegetable at this meal? Did you have fruit at this meal? Did you have protein at this meal? And we break it down like that. And if the answer is no, then we can always say, okay, so what can we add? I like to add to meals instead of take away because the diet culture we're so used to restricting and taking away things we're not used to adding it back in so that's a like that's a mindset shift that we work through as well because we're not used to adding things and it makes us feel like it's too much right or we're like gonna gain weight from that but when we're doing it with the right food and in the right way it can make us feel better and it actually can make us or help us lose weight in the long run. Mm, that's huge. Now <laughs> you, you've hinted at it a few times. I love that you bring in mindset. What are, and you just mentioned one of them, but what are some of the things that you do to help people with their mindset when starting to work with you so that this does stick long-term? Yeah. So um, like I said, first of all, being aware of how we're feeling. Um, I talk about moods a lot. I talk about why we find ourselves eating, right? When I'm going, if if somebody thinks making me upset and I'm going to the fridge every time I'm angry, we have to recognize that, right? And we have to say, okay, do I need to eat this food right now? Yes or no? If I don't, then is there something else that I can do in its place? And so being able to stop just for like 30 seconds and ask ourselves that question, again, we're not used to stopping right? We're used to just going, 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 even eating over the sink or as we're walking, like, you know, maybe even eating breakfast. That's a place where a lot of my clients have to start because they don't eat breakfast. They have coffee for breakfast or they leave, you know, the house without having breakfast. Um, and so we have to give ourselves grace, but stopping to ask ourselves those really simple questions leads into a whole lot of the reason why and then once they start to understand that then that it's like oh okay <laughs> like hmm, this is why i'm feeling this way and once they start to even just make you know like a little shift 
it really makes a difference. So they start to see their energy come back. They start to see them not being so moody, so tired. Um, you know, the cravings stop all of those things because they're being more aware, um, which for me is such a cool thing to see because you can't, um, that's, that's hard to explain until you actually start to see it yourself. Yeah. And that's, you know, clarity and awareness is, is always the first step. We talk about that in, in business when we're consulting with businesses, that's, that's, mm -hmm. we have our, our assessment that gives us the clarity into what your business is doing right now, where you're strong, where you're weak, it, acknowledging that. And for your health, it's so important. I love that you start there and that you mentioned that. Um, now I want you to be brutally honest with me because I'm going to, okay. I'm going to show I'm going to ask you about my version of attempting this. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's what I do, so I'm biased, but tell me if this is good or, or bad, right or wrong, I can take it. Um, okay. So I had this problem. I was, it was the the constant, what am I going to eat? What am I going to do for dinner? What am I going to have for breakfast? There's, there's too many meals in the day. <laughs> all three of them. We're eating all the time. I know. And then you eat and especially lunch. Lunch was the one that really used to get me because I would eat and then I'd be drained in the afternoon. And, and i honestly thought I was eating pretty healthy, but I still, you had no energy and it takes a while. And then boom, your day's over and you didn't get anything done. So what my, my shift was, um, in terms of meal planning, I have the same two meals every single day, every day of the week, I have the same breakfast and I have the same lunch and I never eat dinner. I, I do intermittent fasting. So okay. in terms of monitoring my energy, how I feel, I I'm at peak energy all the time. I do have a lot of coffee. I will put that out there. The listeners of this show know that, but I love my <laughs> coffee uh, and a ton of water. But for me, that's what gets it done because it's super simple and I know I can manage that. How, how does that sit with you? So, you know, I get asked about intermittent fasting a lot um, and it depends. Everybody is different. For me, it doesn't work because I'm hungry all the time. Like mm -hmm. I, I find myself eating every probably every three to four hours. Um, but that's just a personal thing. And if it works for you, and like you said, you have the energy, but those are things that we have to, like that you have to try. And once you find what works for you, then you can stick with that. And making sure that each of those meals um, is really important that you're having protein, your fiber, right? Your fruits and vegetables and carbs, right? Especially if you're doing that intermittent, intermittent fasting, carbs are going to be really important for you so that they can give you that energy. Um, but I love that. I love that you found what works for you and that you're able to do that. And for some people, it's a season, right? It works for a little bit. And then they're like, huh, okay, like I need something different. But being aware of that and being able to switch that up too um, is really that's, that's a big deal to be able to know what works and, and what doesn't. Well, thank you for being nice to me and not saying I'm an idiot. I appreciate that. You can tell me when we're done recording. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> I'm dumb, I won't put it in the show notes. <laughs> I, I can't eat that way, but you know, uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with um, just the emotional eater side too. Like I'm always afraid. I literally am afraid that I'm not going to have enough food during the day. Oh, so I that all the time I hear you. Yeah. So that's where the planning comes in for me. Cause I'm like, okay, this, I know what's coming up next. I know what it is. I know that my last snack before I go to bed is going to probably be like eight or nine. I do usually have yogurt at night because it's like a protein. It'll hold me over for the morning. Um, but that it calms me down. It just calms my nerves down. Um, so every, again, everybody is different and everybody eats differently too. So I, I also too respect that. So <laughs> fair. Well, thank you. Um, obviously it didn't work today because I'm smoking a chicken. I do not smoke a chicken every day, but <laughs> I ran out of my pre-cooked meals and I was like, ah, what do I do? So chicken it is. So listen, I, this has been awesome. I, I love this. I love this topic as you can tell. Um, and I love talking about it, but if people need help, um, I put your website on the screen. If you're listening, what, wherever you're watching, I'll put this in the show notes as well. Um, and you have a freebie for for folks as well. But tell me a little bit about how we can take that next step with you and and meal plan and do this the right way so we're not pulling our hair out along the way. Yeah. So the very best, I mean, you can find me cleaning in with Christy, um, but really the next steps would be to like, take a look at your schedule, right? What is missing? You said lunch was your biggest, um, 
like your biggest stumbling block, what is the meal that gives you the most trouble? And that's usually where I have people start is you start there with the meal that gives you trouble. And then one simple thing that you can do today that does not cost any money or you don't need anything special is pick one meal, usually the meal that you're struggling with and add one vegetable to that meal. That's it. Start every day, do that for seven days and see how much better you feel. Interesting. So the vegetables are the magic ticket. I love it. In my world, yes. <laughs> oh man, eat your, I say that all the time. As a parent, I told you I have three young kids. Eat your veggies. They never get eaten. It is what it is. Always. But that's, that's the world we live in. So listen, Christy, thank you again for coming on. This has been so much fun. Um, go to Christy's website if you want to take that next step, if you want to see how she can help you. Um, and, and I love that we we talk about this. And remember, if you're if you're not fueling your body the right way as a business owner, as a leader, we can tie this very easily to the harmonious architecture. That's the I. Inspire leadership. You can't inspire other people. You can't lead other people if your body and your mind are not in the right place. And if you're not fueling yourself the right way, it won't be. And I, I'm living proof of that. Christy said she is living proof of that too in her past. And that's why I feel it's so important to talk about this topic. So um, the other thing Christy said, which I would be remiss if I didn't mention it, is your calendar. I am so passionate about this because that's how most of our clients find us at What If. It's they're, they're too stressed, they're overworked, they're firefighting. So I'm just going to put this on the screen. Wherever you're watching, I'll include it in the show notes too. If you think your calendar is a hot mess, we need to calm that chaos down. Whatif.com slash chaos. We have a three-day workshop going on um, in, in just a couple of days from when you're listening to this and you can go there. We'll teach you the first couple of steps to calm that chaos and go from chaos to calm in your business so that you do have time for lunch. You do have time to, to, for dinner and meal plan and live your life in a calm orderly manner. That's what we all want. So Christy, thank you again for coming. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. And for those of you listening, Thank you. Comment, subscribe, like, do all those awesome things. And we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thank you.